Hi, welcome to the Phantom Minis YouTube channel. My name is Adam and this is the third part of our series in setting up and playing a game of 2.5 edition X-Wing. Uh, this video is to show what happens when you come to the table and what do you have to do. So you've arrived at a physical or digital table and you brought with you uh, the four ships in my case that you want to play in your list, the dials for the ships which are just down the bottom here showing with the yellow hand pointing at everything. Uh, you also have the ship cards, so in this case four ship cards, uh, the upgrades for those ships with the corresponding tokens. You also need to bring with you um, three obstacles and your opponent brings three obstacles, so mine are just over here. A damage deck, which is just here. Uh, objective tokens, so that you can play the objective based gameplay. Uh, you'll also need your regular um, components such as templates, which are over here in this case, and range rulers. And then on the left we've got dice, uh, focus tokens, calculates, and so on and so forth, including things like tractor beams. Um, with all of those and access to some objectives, you should be able to play a game of X-Wing 2.5 edition. So what do you do next? So uh, when you've um, exchanged pleasantries with your opponent and you're ready to play the game, uh, you need to decide which objective-based uh, game you're going to play. So in TTS we have the objectives over here on the right hand side. So you had either decided before, if you're in a tournament scenario, the tournament organizer may have decided the objective-based uh, game that you're going to play that day. So if I just show them on the screen now, we've got a scenario reference card here um, in TTS which gives uh, general information about uh, deploying and putting together a game. So it shows you uh, that at the start of the place obstacles uh, step of setup, you place one objective marker in the center of the play area, centered, then starting with the first player, players take turns placing the remaining objective markers at range three uh, of the center objectives, objective, and beyond range two of each other objective marker. The first objective marker placed by each player must be placed at range two to four of their board edge, and the second placed at range two to four of your opponent's board edge. Once they've all been placed, you place obstacles afterwards, that's rocks like asteroids or uh, clouds and so on and so forth. Um, as described in the rules reference, obstacles cannot be placed overlapping any objective marker. Scenario rules are in each scenario, so the scenario actions are white actions that are available to every ship in the play area during scenario play starting on the second round. A ship can perform a scenario action only during its perform action step, therefore a ship cannot perform a scenario action if it is granted an action at any other time. It's also worth noting the only way that you can interact uh, with scenario actions is your primary action. So someone like Poe Dameron uh, cannot use his first action to boost and his second one as a scenario. Uh, that is in the rules reference that those sort of abilities aren't allowed. Darth Vader is another example. It must be the first action. Uh, victory. At the end of the end phase, if only one player has ships remaining in the play area, they win the game. At the end of the end phase, if one player has 20 or more mission points and has more mission points than their opponent, the game ends. At the end of the 12th round, the game ends. At the end of the game, if both players have at least one ship remaining in the play area, the player with the most mission points wins. So a few different ways uh, to win. We have the different scenarios just here. So we have salvage mission. We have scramble the transmissions. Uh, ooh, another reference card. Uh, there we go. Assault at the satellite array and chance engagement. So we'll go through all of those. So if you've uh, decided on which uh, scenario you're going to play, it would be after that that you then roll to see who sets up first. So let's go over here. I've got some nice big gold dice to simulate uh, rolling. So you and your opponent would now pick up three attack dice. So that would generally be the red dice and you would roll them and see who is first player for the setup phase of the game. So here we go. And I have a crit, an eyeball, and a hit. Now, the way this works is that crits um, are the primary way to see if you're first player. If I've rolled more critical results than my opponent, I am the first player. If neither of us roll crits, or we have an equal number of crits, you then move on to eyeball results. If I have rolled more eyeball results uh, than my opponent, uh, then I am first player. If we are equal or neither of us have rolled eyeballs, then we move on to hits. Uh, if I have rolled more hits than my opponent, um, then I am first player. If we have got the same 
or um, neither of us have rolled them and we've all rolled blanks, then you just roll again because you must be have tied by then. Um, if you have a tie, you've both ro rolled exactly the same result, then you just roll again and you're looking out for the person with the most crits, after crits, eyeballs, after eyeballs, hits, and then after hits, uh, blanks, obviously, are the worst result. So let's say that I have received first player, and we'll run through the scenarios that you could play. So the first one I want to do is chance engagement. So you can see here uh, at the top of the card, it shows that there is one satellite object on the board. At the start of the game, each player earns mission points equal to their opponent's deficit. Deficit, as per the previous videos, um, is when you have spent less than the 20 points on your squad. So if I'd spent 19 and my opponent 20, my opponent would score one deficit mission point at the start of the game. Starting on the second round of this um, objective-based contest, uh, chance engagement, uh, the a player earns one mission point if they contest the satellite, of which there is one. A player contests the satellite if they have one or more ships at range 0 to 2. If only one player is contesting the satellite, they score an additional mission point. So the important part of chance engagement there is that you can score one mission point every turn as long as you're at range 0 to 2 of the satellite, which will be in the middle of the board. When a ship is reduced to half its health, combine total hull and shields, including any modifications to hull and shields via cards such as hull upgrade or shield upgrade, then the opposing player immediately gains mission points equal to half the squad point value of the destroyed ship, rounded down. When an enemy ship is destroyed or removed from the game, the opposing player gains mission points equal to half the squad point value of that ship, rounded up. If no mission points are scored earlier in the game from a ship that has been removed from the game, being reduced to half its health, the opposing player gains mission points equal to the score point value of that ship instead. So, how do we do this? In TTS it is very simple. We just right click on the objective uh, tokens, press place objective, and it puts an objective for us in the middle of the board, which is fantastic. In a physical game, you would need to measure to make sure the objective is as close to in the centre of the board as you can manage. It's a three foot by three foot area, so a tape measure uh, can be used. You could also fold in the corners of a mat and just find the point at which they all meet, um, or a number of different ways. So uh, that's one to figure out for yourself. Uh, the next thing to do would be uh, then to move on to placing obstacles. So if I was the first player in this engagement, uh, then what happens is I would pick an obstacle. There would be six as we would have created a common pool, uh, but I'll just keep the three that I brought with me to start with and pick three random ones over here. So I'll we'll make this number two and I'll we'll make this number three. So my opponent's placed down three rocks. I've placed down three rocks. I'm the first player. Uh, so I can put any of these six inside this central area. Now when you play in a physical space, you do not need to set up all of these rulers. These rulers are just trying to make it easy on TTS to show that I can't place it here, but I can place it here. Uh, what you do on a physical board is you'd get a uh, range three ruler or a range two ruler if you have one, and you would then make sure that you do not pass inside the distance of the range two ruler towards any board edge. You must be outside range two. So easiest way to do this is just to have a look and go, right, am I inside? I am. And then of course we could turn the rock to face in any direction that you like. So we'll just place one down. Uh, I'm finding the wrong button and press the L button in the case of TTS to lock it in place. Uh, your opponent would then place and then you'd place and then your opponent would place and then you'd place and then your opponent would place. And then you'd have a number of obstacles on the board. It is worth noting that um, you have to have at least a range one in between all of the obstacles. So it should fit a range one all the way around. Uh, you can do this while you place each one individually and just check that you have at least range one. And as long as you're more than range two, from the board edge you'll be absolutely fine and there is chance engagement all set up and you're ready to play uh, from there now what happens next with chance engagement the next step would be moving on to placing ships now if my opponent had all lower initiative ships than me uh, then they would place them all first 
I have on my side of the board an initiative 4 in Colby Sperado, an initiative 5 in Luke Skywalker, a 6 in Wedge, and a 6 in Fenral. So we'll imagine for a moment that my opponent had all low initiative TIE Fighters and they placed them all on their board edge um, and then after that my initiative 4 was the next highest. I would then place my initiative 4 on my side of the board wherever I want inside of range 1. So once again TTS has put rulers uh, for me uh, but in a physical game you would just use uh, the range 3 ruler and make sure that you're inside range 1. So you can't be falling over it. So in the case of TTS, it makes it nice and simple. You can go right to the wire. There we go. And I'm inside range one, but right on the edge. And so on and so forth. You place ships in initiative order from lowest to highest, um, with the person named first player, in this case me, um, going first in any ties. So if we both had an initiative 4, mine would go first, then my opponent's, then my initiative 5, and if my opponent had a 5, theirs, then my 6, then my opponent's 6's, after both of mine are down. <clears throat> and that is chance engagement all set up. Your opponent would have their ships on their side of the board, you'd have your ships on your side of the board, and the next step would be to set your dials. After your dials are set, ready to move, you then grab the dice, Make sure you're both ready, roll them again, and the person who wins the dice roll would then be first player for the next round, and we then move in initiative order. So that is set up for chance engagement. So if we toggle the rulers back and move the asteroids, we'll just quickly go through that. Oh, that asteroid is locked. I wondered why it was misbehaving. There we go. TTS is fantastic for quickly showing different things. So if we grab another one. So salvage mission. Uh, this time you'd receive five supply caches. That's still using the objective uh, markers, which always stay the same size. Uh, for scoring on salvage mission, at the start of the game, you earn the deficit points again. On the second round, um, you can then start earning mission points. At the start of the end phase, you earn one mission point for each supply cache on a friendly ship's card. When a ship is destroyed or removed from the game, the opposing player earns mission points equal to the score point value of that ship. You can see there are some very specific scenario rules, which I won't go into too much detail, because this is more about setup than it is about how you play the actual missions. But I'll leave that on the screen for a moment. You can see there is a towing action. You can see that things happen when you're towing, and essentially you need to move to the um, objectives and then tow them. Oh, uh, there we go. And then tow them to uh, receive the points from the mission. We also have uh, scramble the transmissions, which is three satellites. Uh, this one, uh, you have one in the middle, and then uh, taking turns placing the remaining two. And where's the other one? No, to done chance. And assault at the satellite array is five satellites. And this one is uh, essentially. Um, staying near satellites will score you points. So the difference is that we have our chance engagement is one satellite can score you points every turn. Uh, assault the satellite array, uh, five satellites have the ability to give you points if you can test them and you're ahead of your opponent. Uh, salvage mission, you have the opportunity to take the objectives and move with them. And scramble the transmissions, you move up to and act activate the um, satellites and then you can score points from them and your opponent can uh, deactivate them and turn them into their own to score points from them. So how do you place? We'll be very careful with this. So I have an objective marker here. So TTS tries to help by showing where you need to be. So me placing my first uh, one, I need to be at range three of the center. So I'm at range one, so I'm too close. I'm at range two, so I'm too close. I'm now at range three, you'll be about there. So now it's okay to place it. And then you can see if I go too far away, I'm then uh, beyond range three. So let's place it at range three. Your opponent then does the same. And then you have to do one on their side. And then they have to do one on your side. That would be if you had five 
obviously if you've only got the mission with three then let's move them out of the way oh it's going to get mad because I've got lots of things on the table you could place one here and your opponent could end up placing one here for example and there we go that is how you set up a game of 2.5 X-Wing uh, with a bit of information about the different scenarios, all of which are available online at AMG's website. Uh, I hope this is helpful. Uh, please leave questions in the comments and just ask me anything. Uh, we're all still getting used to scenarios, even if you've got quite a few games under your belt. Uh, it is very different uh, to what we're previously used to, um, so I'm trying to put out as many helpful videos as possible if you're a new player and you're trying to get into the game and there's no core set to buy so you just need someone to take you through it step by step so if I've missed something or something in the rules doesn't make sense pop a question in the comments if you want to like the video that's your choice um, I'd love some subscribers so if you're a new player and you want to subscribe I'll carry on with this series thank you very much